I'm Jared. I'm Marcus. Level with us. Welcome back to the show where we have a cozy video game discussion every week, and this week we are covering the game Demon Turf, which was recently released by the developer Fabraz and published by Platonic Friends. Marcus, would you mind letting our listeners know what Demon Turf is all about? Absolutely. This is a platformer game. You play as a little demon named Beebs and follow her as she ambitiously tries to become the new Demon Queen. She takes over different demon turfs by setting her own checkpoints, and you jump, spin, and punch your way to victory in a game reminiscent of GameCube platformers of yore. Is that fair? (laughs) For sure. There definitely are 3D platformers today, but not many. So, uh, yeah, I uh, didn't get to finish the game this week, but I'm a couple worlds in. I guess before we talk about anything else, I'm kind of curious what your thoughts are on the art style of this game, because you control a 2D sprite in a 3D space, and if you rotate the camera around, the sprite kind of flips. So what what did you think of that? Was that like off-putting at all, or...? It was fine. I, I didn't have like strong opinions towards that in, in particular. There were a few times where I felt like the the platforming... You know, like you had to pay attention to your shadow to figure out where you were going to land because you're a two-dimensional character in a three-dimensional world. So I I think that that was the main, like, con of it. Um, I think as a stylistic choice, it was interesting. Sure. How about you? I I thought it would take some getting used to, but, like, I don't know. I I adjusted surprisingly well to it. Um, It wasn't too hard to, to move in that space. Uh, what was a little harder for me concerning the graphics was just that the first couple worlds are almost monocolored, just like Very they're all red. washed out red, yeah, and orange. And I actually kind of found that a little difficult to see what was around and know what my objective was. Once I got to the island world, though, which is the footage I'm playing during the video version of this show, it, it was a lot easier. It was way easier to see where things were, to move around. I thought it looked nicer, too. Yeah. Uh, hey, right off the bat, did you like this game? Well, that's a question. This isn't usually the way we play, but I, I wanna I wanna let out my true soul concerning this game, and it starts Uh-oh. with me knowing. How did you feel about this game? I liked it. I, I I wouldn't put it above most platformers I've played, but as an experiment, I think it's pretty cool. I I don't know. I'm I'm happy it exists in that. I want more people to make 3D platformers. Mm-hmm. There's so few. The, the the only ones we've gotten this year are like Psychonauts 2, and that's it. Yeah. And then the occasional remake of like a Spyro game or something like that. I do have a few recommendations that I'll share later as far as 3D platformers go. So, no, I, I wouldn't say I loved it, but I did like it. Mm-hmm. What about you? I'm getting I'm getting a feeling here. I'm getting a vibe that you're not a huge fan. If I'm being charitable, I would say this game was not for me. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if I'm feeling less terrible, I would say yeah, I just didn't enjoy. It wasn't like very fun to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, what what did you not like about it? There are certain kind of mechanics I have patience for if there's some aspect of the game that I'm really invested in. Mm-hmm. But I just felt like this game for me, the the platforming at times was frustrating or a little clunky. I I didn't necessarily care about the characters or story especially much. The combat wasn't fun for me. So I I just, I feel like this game does a lot of things that are kind of cool, but I just feel like its execution of those things didn't end up being my my jam. I I do agree that there is not a ton of polish there. Uh, There's a little bit of jank. (laughs) in it um but you know what i felt the exact same way about bug fables i I was like oh this game's a little janky like it's it's not as polished as a paper mario game but then once i really dug into it i really started to understand what they were going for and i began to really appreciate it for what it was so for this game i wouldn't necessarily say it's something everyone needs to pick up but i do think for people who have an interest in it even a passing interest uh i don't know i think they would actually enjoy it but 
you know, we can't all be winners. And I mean, we're covering a game every week here, so there's no chance that we'll be in love with every single one. I mean, honestly, I was kind of excited that I had the the self-discovery experience of not liking it. I was like, finally, maybe I can like talk about something on the podcast that's like contrary to to the usual positivity. Like, I, I kind of want to just be honest. Like, this was probably the, the game I jived the least with of all of the ones we've reviewed on this podcast. Well, let's get into some specifics then. Um, how did you feel about, like, the movement? Because I was actually pretty impressed with it. Like, just like any 3D platformer, I was missing jumps and I was dying a bit. But I really liked the variety of moves. Um, in particular, my favorite was called the dribble, where you jump, you spin and then you jump to do kind of a long jump, but then if you keep the button held down, you bounce off the ground and then you can perform another one and you kind of dribble your way uh, super fast across whatever platform you're on. Game feel is a hard thing to quantify, but I just felt like, you know, like that mechanic, for example, is difficult to control. Like if you're trying to land on a single floating square platform, which is what you're trying to do fairly frequently, if you're trying to dribble to it, it's really hard to stop your momentum or direct your momentum because it, you're, it's a specific distance that's shooting you. Maybe I just am not a fan of 3D platformers nowadays. Maybe I have, uh, you know, gone past my run jump days and I've entered a new era of Marcus, which is intellectual games. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm 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 tearing us down. I I feel like we I mean we need to do star pieces first so we can <laughs> get a, inject a little positivity in here. Sure. Cue the music. Star pieces is where we talk about a cool little detail or something we found in our playthrough that we really enjoyed. And for me, uh, there was I I want to kind of bring star pieces back to where we were talking about little Easter eggs or things that made the experience extra special. Uh, rather than like a central gameplay mechanic. So for mine, uh, one little star piece I wanted to share is that the loading screen, you can jump and there's a little animation for her while it goes. And I love interactive loading screens because I hate sitting through them. So I think that's a win. And I also liked the mods in this game. When you pick up the collectibles in each level, they build up a currency that you can spend to change your moveset a little bit. So you can add just a third jump um, not a very high one, but a third one to help you stay in the air. Uh, you can increase your running speed. You can add a little fairy that buzzes around you and deflects projectiles. And then there's combat mods as well. And uh, I've noticed a lot of indies have been doing that lately. You know, Hollow Knight lets you kind of mod your experience with the badges you pick up. And uh, I've, I feel like I've seen a few other indies that kind of let you customize how the game feels. And to me, that's only a good thing. It just mm -hmm. adds variety. Nice. So those were my star pieces for this week. That's cool. You know, I, I didn't get far enough to, or I, I didn't end up messing with the, the mods, but I, I probably would have liked that as well. That sounds really cool. I actually did just have a general gameplay feature <laughs> as opposed to... Oh, that's to, okay. Yeah. The, the biggest mistake I made with this game was because of just the circumstances I was in physically, I played the first 30 minutes to an hour uh, on mute. Uh, and that was no bueno because the music is great. It's uh, Splatoon-esque, I would say. It's kind of got this like street 90s hip hop specifically feel. It's got some weird vocaloid type stuff. Exactly. It's got like these fun voice clips interspersed throughout. So there, there's this statement on the Steam page for this game. It says, the 3D platformer with attitude. And the music is the place where I actually think that that's true. Like, I mean, yeah, sure, the characters have attitude or whatever, you know, in this E10 game about demons. But the, the soundtrack, I think, specifically has a very cohesive attitude to it, which was very enjoyable for me. I couldn't agree more. I think the soundtrack is a big win. I was a, I was a fan throughout. Uh, now that we've done our star pieces, we've arrived at Quick Jabs. And Jeff, Jeff. And this is the part where we complain a bit about the game, because even if we like something, there's always something to complain about. So Marcus, I know you're waiting. Air your grievances. T just take off the leash. Just let Marcus... Yeah, I'm just chomping at the bit. Uh, not really. I. The, the main thing I was just going to say is combat. It wasn't 
very fun for me. I don't know if that's because maybe I just wasn't good at it, but essentially, you're in these usually kind of uh, sanctioned off spaces. Maybe there are fences around you, and you are trying to bump these enemies like bumper cars into spikes, most commonly. So you can spin to kind of stun them, or you can use kind of a punch thing, which like sends out these projectiles, which push them back a little bit. You know, the 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 shooting of the these punches, I wasn't very good at aiming, or it like wouldn't actually move them very much, or I don't know. It was just something for me that I could have lived without. Yeah, um, I thought conceptually. The combat was pretty cool. I like the idea of like, oh, combat in this game is about pushing your enemies off the stage, because like you know that's like Smash Bros. almost, um, or pushing them into spikes. Like that sounds like a cool idea for a 3D platformer. Because I played 3D platformers where the combat it was like, why is this even in here, right? Like, why am I slashing things? Or in Mario 64, why do I have a, a punch and a kick button? Like, you you barely ever use it. You jump on things, right? That's what Mario does. So in this game, I was like, oh, this is a cool idea, uh, but I'm with you. I was like, I, I wasn't excited whenever it started, uh, and I felt like I couldn't get the hang of it. Like I couldn't quite aim them. They weren't going the direction I wanted them to. Even when I charged up a big hand attack to to push them away. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Maybe if there was less of that, or if it was you know not as prevalent in the game, I wouldn't mind as much. Yeah, and maybe this kind of goes back to game feel. You know, it's hard to put your finger on what isn't working about it or, like, what doesn't feel great. I think you're right that, like, conceptually it's cool. But, yeah, another theme that just wasn't quite jiving with with Marcus. For my quick jab, I would say I'm not a big fan of one of the central mechanics of the game, and that is the checkpoint system. Um, I've seen a lot of people praising it in reviews uh, because it's a risk-reward system, right? You create your own checkpoints, so you can decide, ooh, do I want to save this until I get past this tricky section, or should I save it now uh, just in case I'm about to die? But that's the thing, you never know if you're about to die. You never know if the thing up ahead is tricky. It's kind of like real life. It, like, it's it's actually pretty profound in that sense. Like, you you don't know if you're about to die. You know, now that you say that, my mind is completely changed. <laughs> I, it, you're right, it's true to real life. That's what video games should be. That's right. No, I'm fine with other people enjoying that mechanic, but I'm just kind of a person who runs out of patience pretty quickly, and I was dying so much and retreading the same ground over and over that I was kind of having to put a flag down at almost every moment just because I wasn't sure in this level when I would die next. And this quick jab is not exclusive to this game. Ori and the Blind Forest, you have to create your own checkpoints in that game too. And there was so many times where I either forgot to do it or I did. I wanted to save my resources because you can use them for other things like attacks. And I ended up paying for it. And I just don't like the feeling of punishment. I, I'd rather feel empowered for doing something really cool. You know, I I think that another thing that maybe I should have been a little more patient with is I didn't actually run into, you know, the trailer says tons of mini games or tons of side quests or something like that. There's lots of side quests. And I I haven't I haven't touched any of that. I was more focused on playing enough of the kind of main core of it to to really get a feel for it. So, who knows, maybe maybe those would have been silver lining for me, but I didn't end up experiencing much of that well like i said i did enjoy playing this game this week and i do want to finish it at some point Um, but even if it wasn't my favorite and it definitely wasn't yours uh, i do want to introduce a new segment to our podcast called in the words of reggie fils former president of nintendo of america how about this instead (laughs) i love it i love it i love it i love it this is our chance to recommend games that were similar to the game that we played And it just gives us an opportunity to spotlight other games that we think people might like to try. So I have two recommendations. One of them is called A Hat in Time. It is also an indie 3D platformer, and I would say it really, really does a good job hearkening back to the GameCube era of platformers. It feels like one of those old games. And it has its own moments of jank as well. Uh, But there's so much variety in every level. The objective is always different. Uh, The characters are really funny. It doesn't look the best on the Switch. Uh, You'd probably be better off picking it up on another platform. But no matter where you play it, that's a good one. 
Another 3D platform I'd like to recommend is called New Super Lucky's Tale, which I've also played on the Switch, and that game, to me, is the epitome of polish when it comes to a 3D platformer. You play as a little fox that's running around these beautiful levels, and it's one of the best looking Switch games I've ever seen. It's really colorful, really bright, really smooth and fluid, and I kind of wish every other 3D platform I've played had the amount of polish that this game has. It's a little light on content, but I loved every moment of it, and 100%ing it was so fun. Well, we still have a little bit of time, so let's get into the Reaper review. This is the quiz segment of our podcast, where Marcus and I try and stump each other with nerdy trivia questions. So I've got a very simple one for you this week. My question is, uh, the character, Beebs, has an idle animation when you're not playing. So Marcus, was there ever a moment where you were not playing? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what she does during her idle it's, animation. Isn't it counter to this to ask someone a question about the opposite of playing a game? Not playing the game is what we're talking about now. Um, I do not think I saw this. So I will guess that she taps her foot and looks at her wrist as if she had a watch. Hey, that's that's not a bad guess, but uh, incorrect. Uh, so the answer is she pulls her phone out and, and taps on it, and then she takes a selfie of herself going Bleh, with her tongue out. Uh, nice try. Good guess. <laughs> well, Jared, this game has a feature that you and I have talked about on multiple occasions as being something we like to see in games, especially indie games. You can take pictures in this game. Oh, yeah. There's a, a photo mode. So I don't know how much you did this, but <laughs> um, which of these is not one of the filters within the camera menu? You explored the photo mode, but you didn't do any side quests in this game? Correct. Okay. <laughs> There's a black and white filter, a sepia filter, a filter called Game Demon, a filter called Painterly, and a filter called Distortion. One of those was incorrect. Game Demon sounds weird, but I don't know why you'd make that up. So I'm going to go with Sepia. I don't think there's a Sepia one. Correct. Woo! Woo! Yeah, I, I, because I didn't know if you would necessarily explore the menu, I did have a feeling that you might be able to kind of figure it out. Hey, a win's still a win, my friend. A win is still a win. I did pull out the camera once or twice, but it was always on accident. <laughs> I just accidentally tapped the, the D-pad. The, you know, the reason I thought it wasn't Sepia was because this game is pretty washed out <laughs> color-wise for some of the earlier levels, so Sepia wouldn't make a lot of sense as a filter. <laughs> it's true. Hey, ga Game Demon, by the way, looks kind of like Virtual Boy. Oh, uh, gotcha. That makes sense. Well, we've got one final segment, and that is Rabbit Holes. This is the part of the show where we have free reign to talk about whatever we'd like, uh, especially if it's something that we've been into recently that we want to share with each other. So, Marcus, how about you start us off? Sure. Uh, I played another video game, one that you recommended to me, and I said wasn't for me, but I decided I would revisit it, and that is Tori 2. Uh, it is a $1 game on the... Uh, Nintendo eShop, so I feel like it is more bang for your buck because it is a single buck that you're getting bang for. Uh, that that was a weird sentence, and I never want to say it again. <laughs> um, uh, Tori 2 is a game kind of you're running through an environment like a almost an obstacle course. It kind of focuses on flow a little bit like older Sonic games. And Jared told me that it had some creepy elements to it. And I, you know, played like the first level or whatever. And I was like, huh? So then I had to go back and like see what he was actually talking about. So I beat it. You know, it's it's like a 30 to an hour experience. Um, but yeah, it is fascinating and, and fun that it kind of melds this cutesy genre with like jump scares <laughs> essentially i don't i can't remember any time where i got jump scared but yeah no the the original game tori 3d which uh i also own on the switch and i think you should try because i think i think it's even creepier than the second one was uh originally part of a demo disc called cursed ps1 style games whoa and I, um <sighs> which was i don't know much about That's but it was like a, a big project or something and so it's a, a 3D platformer, and it's really fun. It's all about the speed running. It's all about getting through the level as fast as possible, and that's basically it. Um, but it does that so well that I loved it, and I had to pick up the second one as soon as it came out. 
But I'm really glad you took a, a, another stab at it, because I know you weren't super interested originally. Yeah, so so what, what did you like about it? Was it that the fact that there was some horror elements that kind of piqued your interest again? Yeah, just, just kind of me not realizing that it was kind of genre bending. I thought it was just a just a silly game with a silly character. It was a, a fun experience. That's awesome. Uh, I, I have more questions I want to ask you about the game because I think it's worth talking about even though it's $1 on the Switch eShop. But maybe we'll save that for a future podcast. Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's call it $1 Wonders. Uh, really quick, my rabbit hole for this week is a Kickstarter I backed recently for a game called Marvel Dice Throne. And uh, for those of you who haven't heard of Dice Throne before, it's a board game where you roll five dice, uh, customized dice, and you have three rolls to try and get the roll you want, and then you have a player board with all of your attacks for the character you chose, and you get to pick an attack based on what you rolled. You also have a deck of cards that you can play to mitigate your rolls or upgrade your abilities. And I think it's really addicting and really fun. Some people describe it as like a battle Yahtzee type of game. Or kind of like Magic the Gathering, but with dice. And I've actually already bought all 16 characters, which are already available, which uh, wasn't cheap. But I really love this game. It's really fun. So when they announced a Marvel one, I was actually pretty neutral on the whole Marvel theme. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, that makes sense. Like, that th those characters would fit this pretty well. Because before it was just, like, the Huntress, the Gunslinger, the Samurai, right? Uh, and then there's some weirder ones. But when, when they announced the Marvel one, I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I, I don't know if I'll get it. I have all these characters already. Uh, but then I saw how they work. And it was actually the mechanics that got me super interested enough that... I ended up buying it. <laughs> I ended up back in on Kickstarter. Now, sadly, um, the Kickstarter will be over by the time this episode airs. Uh, we're in the last 48 hours right now. Uh, but I hope that if anyone looks it up and it sounds interesting to you, you can do a late pledge or pick it up when it's eventually at, you know, Barnes & Noble and places like that. I, I will say the the coolest characters to me right now are Black Widow, which I didn't expect, and Thor. And there's like other weird characters, like Loki, you have to like make your opponent guess between three cards which one will let their attack through and which one won't, which is a fun, you know, mind game mechanic. And then Doctor Strange has like spell cards that he can prepare and play every turn, which is also really cool. But Black Widow takes a mechanic that was already in the game and makes it her own, and that's upgrading abilities. She has uh, status effects that allow her to upgrade more easily and allow her to search her deck for them, which is really cool. And then all of her attacks get buffed the more abilities she has, which I think thematically works really well. You know, she her weaponry, her equipment. Yeah, exactly. And then for Thor, he's pretty straightforward, but he has a, a Mjolnir token. And it's actually, if you back the Kickstarter, it's a, a metal zinc hammer, which is really cool. <laughs> Uh, that he constantly just throws and retrieves. He throws it at players for one damage, retrieves it, and it charges him up. And he throws it and he retrieves it. And he does that over oh, and over. Smart. And then his attacks get super, super buffed, and he's just a big damage dealer. So so you could say that his playstyle is straight Thorward? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, you've played Dice Throne. Have you looked into the Marvel one at all? Or is it just me and my, my fandoms? No, I have not, because I have you, my lovely brother, to bring to light the things that interest me. So I absolutely will play it with you when you get it. Sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I recommend it to anyone who uh, wants to check that out. It looks pretty cool. Comes out next year. Thanks for letting me gush on that a bit. I think it's time we wrap things up, but wait, hang on. Marcus, wasn't there something you were going to do this week? Oh, are you looking at me holding my ukulele, caressing it, and holding it in my arms? You are doing that, yes. Well, yeah, I, I, I said I would write a song, so I wrote a song. For those of you who aren't aware, Marcus promised to sing a song, including the names of anyone who decided to write a review for our podcast, which we very much appreciate. So, Marcus, take it away. There are so many games to play, and just as many things to say, me and my brother will do our part. 
I'll share my music happily with Adam, Kira, Andy, Angie. What a wonderful place to start. Won't you level with me? Maybe there's someone who's listening to me. Won't you level with him too? Cause maybe that someone is you. Aww. Thank you, Marcus. <laughs> yep. Quick question for you. Are we going to express our appreciation to our listeners in the future with future musical numbers? It is entirely possible. It, it could be in the cards. I guess there's only one way to find out. And that is writing a review for our podcast and then sending it our way so that we know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, we're going to be covering a game called Deponia by Daedalic Entertainment. It's a point and click adventure and it's on sale on the Switch right now. So if you have any thoughts on that game that you'd like to share with us before we record next week's episode, go ahead and send them to us at levelwithuspodcast at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter at LVLwithus. Until then, I'm Jared. I'm Marcus. And we'll level with you next time. Thank you for leveling with us. The music that you heard in this episode comes from the game Demon Turf by developer Fabraz and published by Platonic Friends. You can find links to their game and the music in the description. All other original music was provided by Marcus. Thanks, Marcus. You're welcome. And it just gives us an opportunity to spotlight other games that we think people might like to try. Just off the cuff, um, there's this cool game where you traverse a, a 3D world and movement feels really good. It's called A Short Hike. I don't know if you've heard of this one. Yes. But... Uh, listen to our last episode if you want a recommendation that would make every list. No matter what the genre of the game is we're talking about that week, I would just say, hey, you need to play A Short Hike. Oh, you like RPGs? Like JRPGs? You should play A Short Hike. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, do you, you like dating sims? Well, I that's a little weird, but you should play a short hike. <laughs>